Hi, my name is Alex with Daytech Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be giving you five features in Jira that you're probably not using, but I highly recommend you start using today as they will tremendously help you be a more effective Scrum Master, Project Manager, whatever you are, and the reason that you use Jira. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Drop a like if you get value out of this video, as dropping likes actually really does help out the channel a lot. So if you want to help the channel grow, make sure you're smashing that like button on every single video. Also, interacting with the channel helps tremendously so if you have any questions comments or concerns or if you just want to say hello let me know in the comment section below and finally before we jump into the video quick announcement i have t-shirts i got merch so if you're interested in supporting the channel buy one buy a few i have six different designs buy one of each get one for your spouse get one for your coworker. get one for the whole team these shirts are available and they really do support the channel so make sure you get your t-shirt and now let's jump into the video The first thing that we're going to be talking about is story points. When you go to your backlog and you are planning a sprint out, as you can see here, I have a sprint and I have an item, I have a couple of stories and a bug, and I have story points for them. When you have this feature enabled, when you're actually using your story points, and I don't want to get into this video about like, should you use story points or how do you use story points? But if you're using story points, Jira becomes better. One, it helps you with your capacity planning. As each item gets values, it will tell you the total for the sprint. In addition, when you come over here and you click on these ellipses, it will also show you by the assignee, so pretty much the members of your team, how many issues they've taken on and how many points are associated to them relative to what's assigned to them. Also, the reports, your burndowns, your sprint reports, your velocity charts, a lot of different other reports that come because you're using a scrum style project, those become valuable now because they use and leverage those story points to show you data. So if you're a team that's skipping out on using story points because maybe they're controversial, maybe your team just doesn't know how to use it, I recommend do your research. I have a video on story points where I give you my two cents, but you should be using story points. So that's point number one. Point number two, you should be using releases or what Jira calls fixed versions. Now, I don't know why it lasting has two different names, doesn't make any sense, but releases and your versions are a great way to draw some lines in the sand to help your team get organized. And when you go jump into Jira, every item that you're working on, you'll notice it'll show you which release it belongs to. It'll show you the version that is associated in the fixed version for that item. So you can use this information. So rather than just staring at a backlog with a ton of items, now you can make some sense into like which ones you should prioritize or which ones come first, and which ones can be referred to a feature sprint based on their release. So that is a really cool feature. And as an added bonus, when you come over to releases, you can set the dates and then based on what's in there, you get a progress bar and you also get some release notes. So you can come over here and this will give you basically a summary of every item that was in that release. So this makes making your release notes a lot easier, which I really, really like. Next topic, you have a basic roadmap. Every single board has this roadmap. Now the basic roadmap is pretty limited. It doesn't get a lot of love. And if you're on the premium version of Jira, you should absolutely be using the advanced roadmap. But for everybody else, for the 99% that can't afford premium because it's ridiculously expensive, we have the basic roadmap. Now, the basic roadmap is pretty basic, but you do get a couple cool things. One of the things that I like is when you come over here to create an item, and you do have to start top down. You do have to start at the epic level. When I create an epic, this is my second epic. Look at what happens when I hit enter. The epic is automatically created. I didn't have to provide or specify the summary and the epic name. Jira does this for me on my behalf. The other cool little thing that you can do here is if you click on this little plus button, I can now start defining my stories. So if I hit story one, again, Jira has automatically done the linking for me. So no longer do I have to open up the story, go find the epic link field, try to remember what epic this is supposed to be tied to, and then find it. So now by clicking the little plus button, that relationship is automatically created. Also, if you're using those releases, you can notice that you start seeing the version here. So you can see when the lines in the sand are established. So you can start planning appropriately. This is only visible though, if you're using dates on your versions, which you should be. The other thing 
is that you can actually set some dates on your epics only on the epics right so if you wanted to maybe say hey this is going to be a seven day epic and this one up here is going to be a couple of days as well well you can do that and if you hover correctly you'll notice that i can now link these together and say hey this epic is dependent on that epic it'll give you a red line if you see that the order of operations is incorrect so you can actually then move things around so that your dependencies are okay no more red line and now you can visualize basically a critical path or an order of operations of which epic should be worked on in which order so that you have the least amount of friction so that's really really cool next up i want to go back to the backlog and i want to talk about insights i think insights is this really cool feature that doesn't get talked about enough but if you click on insights you will get some information you will get a sprint commitment that basically gives you the estimates of like how you're planning your sprint depending on how many points your team has been able to do this is a really bad example because i don't have historical data on this project but in your project you'll be able to see let me see if i go to a different one yeah it'll it'll tell you based on your previous performances right how many points your team was able to do the velocity from previous sprints it'll tell you if you're just right with your planning or committing too much or under committing so this will once you do a couple of sprints, this will be really insightful. It'll help you understand if you're over committing your team is in you're using too many points or, or the, the points in the sprint are over what your team's actual capacity is based on, again, those historical averages. You also get a breakdown. So I'm, I'm going to come back to sprint three. You see that it'll help me break down and understand what kind of issues are coming in. Are we doing features? Are we doing tech debt? Are we fixing bugs? This helps you get a better appreciation for the distribution of the different items that just got planned into your sprint. So this is a cool insight. When you jump over to an active sprint, you get a similar insight, but this one's mainly on the, the progress of the sprint itself. So it'll give you basically a burn down. Again, this is not a really good example because of this. I should really plan this a little bit better, but you get the sprint progress. So it's going to give you a percent based on the items that are moving along. It'll tell you, you're like, hey, you're 25% through your sprint, 50%, 75%, so on and so forth. You get the burn down, so you don't actually have to go to the report. You can see like a miniaturized version here. This is a new one. You actually get issues for attention. So these are like issues that you should be given a little bit more TLC to because something is wrong with them. Maybe they're blocked or they're flagged and you'll be able to basically as a scrum master have a hit list of like, Hey, I need to go take care of and address these problems. And then finally, based on the epics that your stories belong to, you'll get a visualization so you can see, okay, so for this epic, we're 75% done with this epic over 25%. So if you're not linking your stories to epics, you're missing out on this. If you're not using story points, you're missing out on this. And then finally the sprint progress is just a really cool way to see and be able to communicate upstream how your team's doing overall because sometimes just looking at the sprint and where everything's at in the sprint doesn't help you understand that you're 50 percent through or 25 percent through so this is a really cool feature and finally i want to end things with the flag things are inevitably gonna go wrong life happens and you want to very quickly and easily flag items for your scrum master to take a look at maybe something needs escalation maybe something needs like a director of engineering support or something right so you can come over to actions and you can click add flag and this will flag your issues which will then put them into that issues that need attention section and or you can do a quick query to find these issues this is a great way to again escalate things to passively aggressively ask for help without necessarily trying to make a big commotion so those are the five features that i recommend you use in jura i use them almost every single day they're really really good to just help coordinate and drive the team and just add to that team bonding and cohesion because it helps with the communication and expectations most importantly it helps manage the expectations so that's pretty much it for this video if you did get value out of it like i mentioned at the beginning drop a like because that really does help the channel out tremendously so just smash that like button it's absolutely free for you also if you made it this far and you're not subscribed 80 percent of you aren't please consider supporting the channel hit that subscribe button and if you have any questions comments or concerns or if you want to let me know about features that i missed that you i should include in a future video let me know in the comment section below and finally before we wrap up don't forget to pick up your t-shirt at the link below there's a a tech merch store so support the channel get a shirt get one of each get one for your coworkers, get one for everybody you know the more the merrier 
And uh, thank you for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now.